2017. The year has just begun, and I'm already going beyond myself. Up to this point, my longest distance was 20 miles a couple of weeks prior to this day. Ready for a new challenge? I sign up for the Publix Fort Lauderdale A1A Marathon. I started this running journey saying I'd never do a marathon because I couldn't see the sense in running for over five hours. To my past self, I say, get out there. You'll know why you did it when you're done. So how did it go? Let's find out. Hello everyone, I'm the Sidewalk Runner and tomorrow, less than six hours away, I'm finally doing the Fort Lauderdale A1A Publix Marathon, 26.2 miles of straight running. It's gonna, this is going to be a total blast. I'm going to have friends there. Um, we're going to run together. Hopefully we're going to uh, be able to um, pace ourselves properly so that we can all finish at the same time. We're aiming for sub five hours. Five hours is fine, but sub five hours is our target. The weather is the one thing that's kind of having me on edge. It's going to be 70 degrees when we get out there. 82 by the time we finish. It's going to peak at 85 uh, the rest of the day. Unfortunately, the beach is also very humid, which, you know, is a very big factor in uh, running. And of course, I've been running in summer weather uh, for the past two years without a problem. But even still, this is humidity and humidity can be a big problem. So as long as we're all hydrated and we, you know, uh, listen to what our bodies tell us, we should be okay. So let's fuel up, gear up, and get out there. Well, it's race day. Um, as usual on race day, uh, the night before, I didn't get much sleep. I'm just happens. I don't usually eat like solid foods before I go on a long run. Um, I usually just drink, eat a gel and call it a day, but this is different. Um, so I went ahead and ate some, uh, ate a uh, bag out, I'm going to show you in a second, but they tell you not to do anything new. I needed something extra. I needed some extra carbs. So. Okay, so let's go over the final checklist. Got my protein powders, or protein pouches rather. Of course, got my water, my belt. I have my uh, battery in here with the, um, with the charging cable, of course the charger. Of course, this most important. Um, got the baguettes. I have a towel for afterwards. Um, I'm bringing along sunscreen because um, it's gonna be really, it's gonna be hot out there. But more specifically for me, um, I burn pretty easily, so I want to make sure I'm covered on my at least my face. Um, of course, my headphones and my headbands and wristbands. So I think we're good to go. It's running best to God knows what it'll do. I knew what I had to do. If I was to get the time I wanted, I had to stick with at least 11 minutes per mile. Because of the train incidents, we lost about a half an hour of darkness. That cool, crisp air gone too soon from us. Fortunately, there was a good amount of shade provided by the trees in the park and the high rises along A1A, shielding us from the Florida heat. At least, for a time. Humidity is almost topped out by this point. I know that if I'm going to finish this race, I'm going to have to switch gears. After this point, I had almost completely stopped recording. I was so focused and determined to finish under the six hour time limit. I do recall some of the last half, how I felt, and what was on my mind. Running was not an option at this point, as my calves began to spasm heavily a few seconds into it. I knew that power walking was my last resort. It would bring my pace down to about 13 minutes, but I could sustain the speed for the rest of the race and still be under the time limit. The sounds of A1A and its inhabitants going about their lives was starting to become distracting, so I started listening to my podcasts, and that helped me to cross that finish line. A cup of water over my head at every water station kept me cool, and I always reached for Gatorade. Who would have ever thought that a native Floridian could be taken down by heat, of all things, especially when he's been running for the last two years. But, sadly, that is what has happened. 
I'm doing a power walk instead, averaging about 13 minutes per mile. If I can stick to that, I can still beat, not five hours, but the allotted six hour time limit. Let's go, 17 minutes, 17 miles. I never imagined in uh, all my running career I'd be able to say that I actually won one of these for running that distance. But I did it. And I don't think I'll ever do the A1A again. I'm not saying I'll never do a marathon, but you know what? There's other marathons out there, there's other races to have fun in. So I'll put this on the back burner and just say I completed it. And time to walk back to the car, all six blocks, because the stop where the shuttle takes us is back that way, at the beginning where the race, you know, where the beginning of the race was. But I parked over that way because it's a lot safer. So I'm just gonna walk back and refill and get lost. That was just one of the funnest, a bit toughest, definitely the toughest runs I've ever done. But you know, it's just so surreal of you know, 18 miles, 19 miles. And then when I started getting up into like 22, 23, 24, just kept going and, you know, it just felt good. It's like, dude, you know, few, you know, just a little bit more of this, you know, like 20 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, you're done. You just feel accomplished. That's what I've done. So can't thank you guys enough for coming along in this journey. I really wish I got more uh, footage uh, towards the second half, but it was just really starting to tax on me. Um, but you know what, I got what I, I, got what I could. Um, and I hope to do uh, another marathon uh, in the future. I'm not sure which one yet, but you guys will come along for the ride. So thank you everyone for uh, joining me. I'm the Sidewalk Runner. I'll see you from the sidewalk. So let's fuel up, gear up, yeah, blah, blah, blah.